I want to take a walk a little bit down memory lane, but it's actually a current event. Okay. But uh, what's going on right now is there's uh, another kind of standards battle happening in the automotive space as it pertains to charging phones. I remember early on in the industry, like around 2014, 2015, there was a standards battle between Qi and PMA. And uh, actually, I remember GM backed PMA, put a bunch of wireless power transmitters into their vehicles, and then a bunch of people had Cadillac, Cadillac Escalades that by the time the iPhone came out and the Samsung phone came out, couldn't charge their phones right. with like fancy right. Cadillacs. Right. And that, yeah. that created a real big problem. Since then, uh, you know, most of the industry, all of the industry adopted Qi. But recently, there's been a little bit of a curveball thrown by Apple. So can you talk about like, the new standards battle that's coming up for automotive companies? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, yeah, auto companies thought they were in the clear when it came to standards. Right, everything's going to be chi. All the phones will work happily together. Right. We can put like five of these in the, in the car for everyone now, and then record scratch, and we're right. not there anymore. So iPhones and Apple introduced mm -hmm. another wireless charging variant called... Okay. Uh, MPP. Yeah, MPP. Or and it's their MagSafe wireless charging, right. which consists of magnets in a ring for self-locating on the charger. Yeah, so really cool when you're taking your phone and you like want to put it on a stand. It even hangs there. It attaches. You can attach wallets and stuff to the back of these phones. So it works really well from a consumer perspective. But why is this causing uh, car companies heartache and problems? Right. So the chargers that have been installed and designed into vehicles today yeah. support cheap, and that's great for interoperability for all, you know, all the other phones that are Qi certified. Yep. iPhones aren't Qi certified, so this magnetic power profile standard mm -hmm. that you're trying to create and the MagSafe standard make that charger behave differently and sometimes inefficiently or not at all. So it's a real interoperability problem right now for auto OEMs and when they're designing in wireless charging, for sure. Yeah. So if I'm an automotive OEM like Ford or Tesla or BMW, or if I'm a tier one, a company that makes their you know, subsystem design them, designs those, I have a decision to make right now. Uh, I have to decide, do I want something that works really well with Apple products? Or do I want something that works really well with the rest of the products? Right. But as of this moment in time, there's not really a common ground uh, to get behind. Mm -hmm. And so what I think I'm hearing a lot about is people putting their new iPhones down on like a nice new charger in the center console. And they're like, why does my phone get so hot? This is ridiculous. I might as well just plug it in. So are those the types of problems that are being created by this uh, lack of unified standard? Absolutely. Consumer is going to see it in heat, yeah. so my phone is hot. And if it get, does get hot, especially in a hot vehicle, it might stop charging. Yeah. Like, there's communication there between the phone and the charger. For safety reasons. For sure. Yeah, sure. shut it down. Don't right. overheat the battery. Yep. Right. Or sometimes not charging at all. Yep. So those magnets, if the charger is designed differently, yep. something that the OEM might not know about, it might you know, see those magnets as a foreign object right. and say, just turn off. Yep. And it's a real problem we're seeing right now. Right. So hopefully there's a way forward where you can uh, happily have, uh, you know, one person with an iPhone, one person with a Samsung phone, all sitting happily in the same Mercedes Benz or whatever that car is or Toyota Corolla. Uh, but as of right now, that's not really the case. And so um, hopefully uh, we get to that point uh, because these cars last, I think the average scrap rate on a vehicle is 12 years. So if you think about how many new versions of an iPhone or new version of a Samsung Galaxy phone are created in that 12-year window, I mean, phones change a lot sure. in the life of one car. Right. So it's pretty important to uh, create that common standard. And right now it's a head scratcher for automotive OEMs and tier ones, but hopefully that'll change soon. Yeah, I think, you, I think there'll be a coalescence around more of that standard again. I think we'll see it. And there's things that we do here at New Current too that help us look at all those different corner cases. Yeah. Absolutely. I can't, I can't take the sales guy out of you, huh? No. All right. So that's all right. I, got, I have to slide it. You got to plug it in. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks. Yeah. Bye. Bye.